Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Elaine Carroll, and I'm a digital marketing executive at BrightPay. I'm also joined today by Anya Courtney and Robin Mills. I want to let you know that this webinar is being recorded. Later today, we'll send you an email with the recording and a copy of the presentation slides. So if you need to leave the webinar at any stage, don't worry, you'll be able to watch it back at a later date. We will also include in the email some useful documents and additional resources that you may find helpful. This webinar has been specifically designed for accountants and bookkeepers. If you're here, you're likely wanting to move payroll software providers and are particularly interested in learning more about BrightPay's payroll software. You're also likely to be interested in how you can prepare for the switch and what's involved. So we're going to take a look at the challenges involved in switching payroll software and what you can do to make the process a lot smoother. We'll look at how BrightPay addresses these challenges and the benefits of choosing BrightPay as your new payroll software. This will be followed by advice and a demonstration on what you can do to make switching to BrightPay as efficient as possible. So first, who are BrightPay? BrightPay is an award-winning payroll software that makes managing payroll quick and easy. At the moment, our products are used to process the payroll of over 333,000 businesses across the UK and Ireland, and we've been developing payroll software for over 30 years. BrightPay has a 99% customer satisfaction rate for an impressive seven years in a row, and five-star ratings on both Trustpilot and software advice. BrightPay is a desktop-based payroll software and is available for both Windows and Mac. All BrightPay licenses include 10 activations, and this means that payroll processing is possible by up to 10 users or from 10 different locations. We do also have a cloud extension called BrightPay Connect. This is a payroll and HR platform which backs up the payroll data to the cloud and provides bureaus and their clients with a self-service portal. As I mentioned, BrightPay is a multi-award winning product. Most recently, we won the top payroll product at the 2021 Accounting Web Software Awards, as well as the Payroll and HR Software of the Year at the 2021 Luca Awards. Both these awards are voted by members who are accountants and bookkeepers. And I'll pass you over to Anya now. Thanks, Elaine. Before we get into the challenges, I want to first take a look at why you want to switch payroll software providers. Because you're certainly not alone. In the past, customers would spend years with a software provider, even when they were deeply unsatisfied with the product. However, we've seen a real shift in consumer behavior the last couple of years. Customers are now reviewing their payroll software much more often and are switching providers more frequently. There's a number of factors driving this. First, you have more competition, and this is driving accountants and bookkeepers to look at their software and see how it can help them. You're asking, how can the software make you more competitive, more profitable, and how can it help you save time in certain areas? Secondly, you also have more choice. There's plenty of payroll software options available, and there has been a real drive between us all to make payroll software easier to understand, more user-friendly, and more innovative. Lastly, the pandemic drove this change. It really exposed flaws and gaps in payroll software and in the service which was being offered. It particularly exposed poor support being offered, lack of working from home functionality, and emphasized slow responses to industry changes, not something you want from your payroll software provider. Let us know though, if we missed a reason for why you're looking to move payroll software by typing it into the questions box on the side of your screen. But as we approach the new tax year, the focus should really be on the future. What do you want from your payroll software in 2022? And will it be able to continue to meet your needs as your business grows and diversifies? HR and payroll software are becoming increasingly linked, and this offers you a big opportunity to expand your services at very little cost. Even though you may not have experience with it, you can begin to incorporate HR features into your services, which can add a lot of value to them. This can include offering your clients an employee app, managing annual leave, giving clients the ability to share confidential documents, or providing them an easy way to keep the most up-to-date contact and personal information on their employees. 
you may also be thinking about digital banking and how this may impact your business. Digital banking has become the norm and businesses are becoming more interested in using it. This can represent a new opportunity for you. So it's worth thinking about how your payroll software can help with this. And it's better to start thinking about this now rather than in five years time. More pressingly, when we look at 2022 and what payroll processors need, we can see that they're dealing with the same challenges that many other types of businesses in different sectors are facing. Unsurprisingly, remote and hybrid working remains an issue. Your payroll software will need to accommodate this. Additionally, if you're struggling with finding skilled employees, like many businesses are, then you should be looking at how your software and processes can help. Your payroll software should be intuitive enough that new employees with less experience can be trained on it quickly. Your payroll software should also automate as many tasks as possible. So if you do have a skills shortage, you can spend less time on unnecessary repetitive payroll tasks. More practically, your payroll software should cater for further SSP and IR35 changes, as well as the introduction of the health and social care levy. As you can see, there are many things you need from your payroll software, now and in the future. The software you choose can really make a difference to how long you spend processing payroll, as well as how you can enhance your payroll services. So while there may be challenges to switching payroll software, the benefits can outweigh them. Next, we'll take a look at some of the challenges of switching software. It's useful to identify these challenges so that we can then start to look for solutions. And at this stage, BrightPay have helped a lot of customers switch to our software, so we have a good insight into the process. We've identified, identified the critical points that when addressed mean businesses are well prepared and can quickly transition to their new software. The first challenge is to make sure your business operates as normal when transitioning over to your new software. This means that you can deliver your services as normal and your clients experience little to no effect. This is important particularly for payroll software. Processing payroll for your clients incorrectly as a result of switching software is something you want to avoid at all costs. To tackle this problem, we recommend that you initially run your new payroll software alongside your previous software in parallel. So this is a good way to determine that everything has been set up correctly in your new payroll software and that there are no inaccuracies. It also provides the comfort of knowing you have a failsafe. You'll still have access to your previous payroll software and you'll be able to cross-check employee data after the import. The second challenge is the onboarding and training of employees into the new payroll software. This challenge can be applicable to any new software being introduced into the workplace, and it can be broken down into two parts. First, there may be a reluctance on the employee's part to learn a new software. And secondly, the payroll processors need to be given adequate time to learn and train on the new software. Both these challenges can be tackled head on and how much of a challenge it will be will vary between different businesses. There are a couple of things you can do to make this a lot easier. First, if you anticipate resistance about learning a new software, which to be honest is not something we often see, it's more likely the payroll processors are the ones eager to switch software as they understand the limitations of the old one. But if you do, then choose one or two knowledge experts from your team. This is an employee who is happy to roll out the new software and can see the benefits of it. This employee can act as a champion of the software, can lead training sessions on it and explain its benefits to their colleagues they can help out to get the rest of the team on board. The second part of the challenge is ensuring you give your employees enough time to train on the new software. Inadequate training can hold businesses back from using the full functionality of their software and getting the most out of it. Prioritising training needs to come from the top down. Managers need to support the adoption of the software and prioritise training in their team's schedules. The next challenge is finding a payroll software that will integrate with your existing financial tools or indeed with the ones you want or plan to implement. Typically, accountants consider their accounting software as the hub of their business tools. Therefore, when you choose a new payroll software, you most likely want one that integrates with your accounting software, such as Sage or Xero. 
And this isn't the only integration you should consider. Your new payroll software should ideally provide integrations with pension schemes as well. Both types of integrations can have a significant effect on how efficient your payroll workflow can be. An integration between the different systems can save you time and reduce the chance of errors associated with manual entry. The next point is a challenge of sorts, but it can also be considered an opportunity. When you are switching to a new payroll software, you will need to consider whether the new payroll software will provide you with what you need in order to continue offering your current services to your clients. If the software can't help you deliver your current services, it may disrupt your business and affect your relationship with your clients. However, realistically, your new software should not only cater for your current services, but should provide you with the opportunity to offer additional services to improve your offering. Moving on to our fifth challenge. If you expect your business to grow, you will want to make certain that your software can keep up. Will it be able to manage the number of employers you expect to take on as clients? Or if your clients expect to hire more employees, will it have an impact on the payroll software that you can use? If the payroll software can't manage the expected growth, you may have to move software again in a few short years. To avoid this potential headache and time wasted, examine the type of licenses offered by the software company and any caps that they may have on employee numbers. Often, there are limits associated with different types of licenses on the number of employers or the number of employees you can process payroll for. For this challenge, you simply need to take time to consider your business plan and the options available. Something else to consider from your new payroll software provider is the support they offer. Chances are you'll have a question or a tricky issue down the line that you will need help with. When considering your options, check whether the payroll software provider has a dedicated customer support team and confirm the various ways you can get in touch with them. What type of support do they offer? Can you contact them by phone and email? And do you have access to other types of support such as webinars, step-by-step -step guides, and video tutorials. Most importantly, make sure to check if there are additional costs associated with customer support. The next challenge is to make sure you look for hidden costs and clauses. It's common for customers who are searching for new software solutions to look for one that doesn't require a costly setup charge. When focused on not having to pay this, Sometimes hidden costs and clauses go unnoticed. It is something you need to look out for. Some providers will lock you into long contracts, charge you for extra features or for customer support, make it difficult to leave without a long notice period, and in some cases, automatically increase your fees each year. To avoid getting trapped in such a scenario, carry out some research, read the fine print, and avoid vendors with opaque and confusing contracts. Finally, looking at our last challenge, migrating data to the new payroll software. Arguably, migrating payroll data from your old system to a new one is the most time-consuming part of the job. Certainly, it's the most tedious. However, it is an important part of the process and requires careful attention to reduce errors and minimize potential issues which may have an impact down the line. Early preparation and making a realistic plan for how long it will take to migrate the payroll data is key. We'll be looking at this in more detail later in the webinar. Now that we've looked at the challenges that can be associated with moving payroll software, we're going to look at the solutions and how BrightPay in particular can help. The Solutions addresses the challenges head-on and can help make the transition to your new software a much smoother process. The first challenge we mentioned was the importance of running your business as usual. So we recommend that you initially run your payroll software in parallel with your previous one. And this is the best way to ensure that you get the payroll process correctly without any interruptions to the delivery of your services. BrightPay offers a 60-day free trial of its payroll software. 
This is an ideal way to test out the software to see if it's a right fit for your business and it also means that you have the chance to run it alongside your old payroll software. The free trial version has full functionality with no limitations on any of the features. When you download the free trial, there is no obligation to buy, so you will not be asked for any credit card details or to sign any contract. When we look at how Brightpay can help with the next challenge of, on of onboarding and training new employees onto the software, we can immediately see how useful it is to have an intuitive software. Brightpay was specifically designed with the goal of providing an easy to understand payroll software. So much so that even the most inexperienced pay payroll processor can, in a short time, get to grips with the software. In last year's annual customer survey, over 98% of new users to Brightpay rated the software as easy to use. The first thing we would recommend in terms of training is to book one of our online free demos of Brightpay. The demo will take you through how Brightpay payroll software works and the process of running your payroll on a day-to-day -day basis. Following the demo, you can access more in-depth video tutorials of how the software works and hundreds of step-by-step -step guides on our website. When we spoke about the challenge of integrating your payroll software with your existing financial tools, we mentioned the importance of having API integrations to your accounting software and to pension providers. APIs allow two systems to talk to each other, which means you can seamlessly transfer data from one to the other. Brightpay offers both accounting software integrations and pension provider integrations. There are 12 APIs to various accounting packages, including Accounts IQ, Sage Business Cloud Accounting, and Xero. We have APIs to four pension providers, Aviva, Nest, The People's Pension, and Smart Pension. If one of your clients uses a different pension provider, we also support up to 14 other pension providers using CSV uploads. <clears throat> you also have the option of using Brightpay's API with Modular, the digital banking platform. This gives you a fast, secure and easy way to pay employees, subcontractors and HMRC. On top of this, there is a CSV integration with Comma, an open banking bulk payment system that makes it easy for accountants and bookkeepers to pay salaries, taxes, and invoices to suppliers and staff. By considering how Brightpay can integrate with your existing financial tools, you can ultimately save time, reduce manual entry errors, and improve your payroll workflow. Next, we'll take a look at the challenge of integrating with your service offering. We spoke about the importance of your new software being able to support your current payroll services, and the potential opportunities it could offer you. Can it add value to your payroll services? So I'm going to quickly run through three ways Brightpay can enhance your services. And the first is client payments. As I just mentioned, Brightpay for Windows provides access to digital banking and faster payment services with the payments platform modular. This means you can pay employees, subcontractors, or HMRC on behalf of your clients in under 90 seconds. 24-7, 365 days a year. It is by far a more flexible and quicker way of making payments compared to exporting and importing bank files. By utilising modular and adding digital banking to your service offering, you can have the potential to offer customers a new digital payment solution that is instant, reliable and easy. And just to note, this integration is only available on Brightpay for Windows. And next we have offer CIS services. The Construction Industry Scheme, or CIS, and its associated payroll services represent a valuable opportunity for accountants. It opens up an entirely new customer base with the potential to grow your client list. The startup cost of offering this new service doesn't have to be high either. With Brightpay, you have access to full CIS functionality at no extra cost. And lastly, we have offer additional HR services. Another way to add value to your payroll services is to offer additional HR tools to your clients that make managing their employees easier. If you decide to use the cloud extension, Brightpay Connect, to back up your payroll data online, you'll also gain access to a whole host of other HR features. You can offer your clients an employer self-service dashboard and a payroll app for their employees. 
The self-service dashboard allows employers to control annual leave requests, give employees access to pay slips, run their own payroll reports, approve the payroll summary, and update and edit employee personal information. When we look at how to address the next challenge of whether your payroll software can be scaled up, you'll need to look at the different software licenses available and how much data the software can process. Brightpay's licenses and pricing structure is very straightforward. Bureau licenses are based on the number of clients you have while employer licenses are based on the number of employees you have. We offer three options for bureaus, which allow accounting and bookkeeping businesses of all sizes to avail of the software. This means that an accountant with 10 or less employers can choose a license for £279. If you currently have or plan to take on more clients, you have the option of choosing a license for up to 25 employers at £449. Those with more than 25 clients can buy the third option for an unlimited number of employers at £559. With the option of different licenses and the knowledge that Brightpay can cater for these employees, you can concentrate on your business without having to worry about whether your payroll software can keep up. We spoke about the importance of customer support being included in your license. The right payroll software provider can and should offer significant help when issues arise. At Brightpay, we believe providing free support is what's best for our customers, and it continues to motivate us to create problem-free software. You can be confident in knowing you'll always have the most up-to-date software in line with current payroll legislation. During the pandemic, our fast response to legislation changes saw us win the COVID-19 Hero Award for suppliers at the Accounting Excellence Awards. Last year, Brightpay's customer support received a 99% customer satisfaction rate for the seventh year in a row. The support is completely free. You have access to free phone and email support from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday to Friday with the exception of lunch from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Outside of these hours, there is an extensive range of live webinars, video tutorials, and online help guides on our website, which can help you with a majority of the questions that come through to the support team. To avoid hidden costs and clauses that some customers fall victim to, it's advisable to choose a software provider that has a transparent pricing structure and is upfront about any additional charges. With Brightpay, all licenses include full functionality at no extra cost. Along with free customer support, you will have full functionality for auto enrollment, payrolling of benefits, P11Ds, emailing payslips, and a CIS module. The only additional cost is for the cloud extension Brightpay Connect, and the pricing for this is very transparent. Our prices are per tax year, excluding VAT. The last challenge I'm going to look at is the migration of your data from your old payroll software to your new one. And as I previously mentioned, this is the one challenge that will take up a bit more of your time and will require your focus. One of the most common questions that we receive is, how long will it take to get set up? This really is one of those, how long is a piece of string questions? as it completely depends on your situation. Some accountants might have a simple setup with a lot of single director clients all on a salary, whereas other users might have clients in complex commission structures. When migrating your data to Brightpay, there are a number of tips we can give you that will make the process quicker and easier. Our first tip is to check if your current software allows you to export employee information. Brightpay includes the ability to import employee information in CSV format. Therefore, if your current payroll software allows the export of employee information in CSV file or to Excel, which can be saved as a CSV file, Brightpay's import utility can be used. Brightpay also caters for the import of employee information using an FPS, 
if your current software allows you access to this. If your current payroll software does not allow you to either export the data using a CSV file or an FPS file, then the employee details will need to be set up manually within BrightPay. It's important to be aware, however, that even after importing your employer and employee data using CSV files, there are still some pieces of information that cannot be imported and need to be set up manually. So taking a certain amount of time to complete the migration is necessary. This leads us to our next tip, and that is to give yourself enough time. Be realistic with the amount of time you'll need in order to import the data over to BrightPay. With enough time, you can perform the import well in advance of your next payroll due date. You can review the imported employee data and manually enter any additional information without being under pressure. Setting out enough time is particularly important if your current payroll software does not allow for the export of employee data. As well as having enough time to migrate to BrightPay, it's also important to choose a time which is most convenient. For most companies, the easiest time to switch to a new payroll software is at the start of a new tax year, as this only requires the import of employee details. As employees will start the new tax year with zero balances, there is no requirement to import across mid-year cumulative pay information. However, if you do want to move mid-year, then both employee information and their mid-year pay information will need to be imported. With BrightPay, you can import both employee and their mid-year pay information at any point in the tax year. Although again, this is only if your current software allows the export of such information. Bear in mind that many businesses are looking to switch to a new payroll software at the beginning of the tax year. The start of April is a very busy period for BrightPay's customer support team, which can lead to longer waiting times. My suggestion would be to switch sooner rather than later. That way everything can be set up so that you're ready to go on the 6th of April. Our next tip is to keep access to your previous software. This can help in two main ways. First, it allows you to cross-check employee data after the import. If, for example, the employee data didn't export correctly or the mid-year totals are for the wrong period, you can still create a new export file in your old software. The second reason, and it's a point I previously talked about, is the useful exercise of running both your old payroll system and BrightPay side by side for a period of time. This is a good way to determine that everything has been set up correctly in BrightPay and that there are no inaccuracies. If you want to do this, make sure you migrate over to BrightPay before your old license expires. Don't forget, if you do want to run a parallel pay run, Ensure that only one RTI submission is submitted to HMRC from either your old or your new system. And just to mention, if you see differences in statutory pay amounts or in national insurance contributions in BrightPay, it is important to note how both of these are calculated in the software. BrightPay uses the full statutory week method when calculating and applying statutory pay calculations. Therefore, if your previous payroll software used the pro rata method when calculating and applying statutory pay calculations, you may see a difference in this instance. And then in relation to national insurance contributions, there are two ways in which to calculate NICs and both methods are acceptable by HMRC. BrightPay uses the exact percentage method in its calculation of NICs and therefore, if your previous payroll software use the table method when calculating national insurance, you may see a difference in this instance. Our next tip that will help make the migration to BrightPay smoother is to take a look at the many resources we have online, particularly the support documentation. This has information on how to migrate to BrightPay and also answers various how-to questions. To show you how useful the support documentation is, I'm going to access it by clicking on the support section of our website, followed by payroll support documentation.
For example, when I search the word sage, everything in relation to sage will show up. You'll see here results on importing from sage 50 payroll using a CSV file at the start of the year or mid-year. And now if I scroll up the page here, the top result is in relation to Brightpay's integration with Sage Business Cloud Accounting for importing payroll journals. The second method of finding the right help guide is, again, by going to the support tab, followed by switch to Brightpay. This will give you quick access to the various help guides and information when switching to Brightpay. Brightpay currently has dedicated support documentation to assist you with migrating to Brightpay from 15 different payroll software providers. If you are migrating from another payroll software, you can refer to our support documentation for other software using a CSV file or for other software using an FPS file. There are some other practical things to keep in mind. The different payroll software providers can use different terminology. For example, what is known as works number in Brightpay may be known as employee number in another payroll software. Before performing a CSV import into Brightpay, it is recommended you familiarize yourself with the terminology used in Brightpay and to find its equivalent in your existing software, if different. This will assist at the import stage when matching columns to the data it represents. I'll include a list of the terminology used in Brightpay in an email to all attendees after the webinar. It's also important to note that there is some information that cannot be imported and needs to be set up manually in the payroll software when switching to Brightpay. So I'm just going to go through the list. Pension schemes cannot be imported. Pension schemes cannot be imported. Calendar information cannot be imported. Student loan deduction plans will need to be reselected. Attachment orders cannot be imported. If you have previously claimed statutory payments, you will need to enter this amount into the additional amount section in the HMRC payments tab. Previous P30 information is not carried forward. Logos cannot be imported. Pay rates, additions and deductions cannot be imported. P11D information is not carried forward. Benefits are not carried forward. Employment allowance will need to be enabled in the software. As you can see, there can be quite a bit of work involved depending on the complexity of the payroll. Once you have imported all the employee information, the average time needed for additional setup for a company with 30 employees would usually be up to an hour or two. While it can take time to get set up, the monthly time-saving benefits from switching software can be significant. Now that you have everything you need for preparing for the transition to Brightpay, I'm going to pass you over to my colleague Robin, who will give you a tour of the software. Thanks, Anya. Here we are in the payroll software, and the first thing that we'll need to do is create our employer file. You can choose to create a new employer, or depending on the payroll software provider that you are migrating from, you may be able to import much of your employer and employee data directly. The process is very different for each of these payroll systems, so please make sure you follow the help guide for guidance that's specific to you. For today's webinar, I'm going to create a new employer, and we just need to fill out the following few screens. First is how you'd like to use Brightpay. You can start at the beginning of the tax year, start partway through the tax year, or continue partway in the tax year. Next, we need to add our employer name and address, and I'm just going to use a cheat key here to add some dummy information. Next, we need to enter employer registration information, so the employer PAYE reference number and accounts office reference number. You also need to tick the box if you're eligible for small employer's relief. And whether you want to tax benefits by payrolling of benefits or by P11Ds at year end. On the next screen, we can add departments that we want to associate employees with, and these are optional. 
Next, we need to specify the settings for a typical employee. And this will be used as default when a new employee is added to the payroll. But these can also be changed on an individual basis. So it's just the defaults that we wish to use. Here we have the various pay frequencies, the typical pay basis and pay method. We also have annual leave settings as well. So for example, whether we want the leave to be accured, etc. Next, we have automatic enrollment. And here we need to let BrightPay know your next re-enrollment date. And this is so BrightPay can trigger an automatic reassessment of employees when the date rolls around. And the final tab then, we can password protect the file and save to finish. You can store your file locally on your PC, or you can also browse to a different location, for example, a shared drive or server, or to a cloud drive such as Dropbox. So this is the company now set up. The next step is to import our employees. So if you have a new starter, you can set them up manually. But if you can export the CSV file or the FPS file from your current software, you can import all the employees at the same time. To import employee data into BrightPay from a CSV file, go to File, Import Export Data, and then import employees from CSV file. Browse to the location of your employee's CSV file and click Open. Your employee information will be displayed on screen. For each column, choose the employee data it represents. To assist with column selection, select Match Header Row, and BrightPay will try and match as many columns as it can for you. And when ready, click Import. Here we have our employees set up on the payroll. It is also recommended that all employee details are reviewed before processing any payroll to ensure information imported is the correct and applicable for the tax year in question. If you're importing employee data using the FPS option, it will only bring across employee information that is required by HMRC in a full payment submission. And so further manual entry may be required for each employee record for employee information that is not included on the FPS. For example, email addresses, bank details, annual leave entitlement and the employee's department. After reviewing your employee information, simply click the payroll tab to commence processing payroll and set up your payment schedule. Regardless of the import option that you are using, there are some bits of information that are not imported that we need to add manually. And this is where it can get time consuming depending on the setup of your payroll. One of the main areas that needs manual setup is auto enrollment. We have an alert at the top of the screen here for auto enrollment. And if I click on add edit scheme, it will bring me directly into the pension settings. It is very important to double check the automatic enrollment setting to make sure that this is filled out. We already completed this when we were setting up the employer a few moments ago. But if you imported the employer information, you may just need to enter this information manually. Next, you need to enter the details of your auto enrollment pension scheme. Click add scheme and choose the relevant pension scheme from the list. And now we need to enter the details of the pension scheme. When the scheme has been added to the payroll software, we can go back to the payroll tab to enter the employee's payroll information. BrightPay is telling us here that the employee is an eligible job holder and it gives us the various options available for the employee. We can select Enroll if the employee is currently enrolled in the pension scheme, postpone if the employee is currently in a postponement period, 
We can click go if the employee has enrolled in a pension scheme but has now opted out or ceased, or we can mark the employee as exempt from auto enrolment. To let Brightpay know that the employee is enrolled in a pension scheme, simply click enroll, choose the scheme, choose the tax relief and continue. And rather than doing this for each employee individually, you can do this for all eligible job holders at the same time. It'll select all employees and now Brightpay knows that these employees are enrolled. As you will already have communicated with the employees, there is no requirement to provide them with any communication letters. However, Brightpay may prompt you to do so. To indicate that you have already communicated with the employees, click Letter, followed by Mark as done for multiple employees. Now all the flags have disappeared and going forward, Brightpay will assess employees in the background each pay period and notify you if you have automatic enrollment duties to perform. For example, if a non-eligible job holder reaches the age of 22 or if their earnings go above the threshold. With auto enrollment, there are two types of files that may be required by the pension provider and one of these is an enrollment file. This lets the pension provider know that a new employee has been enrolled in the pension scheme. If your pension provider requires an enrollment file submission, Brightpay will notify you that this needs to be sent. However, where the employee has already been enrolled previously, rather than sending them this information again, you can simply mark this as sent by Brightpay. If you are migrating to Brightpay mid-tax year and have previously recovered statutory payments in the same tax year within your previous software, these amounts must be recorded in Brightpay to ensure correct year-to-date figures are reported to HMRC when you next submit an employer payment summary. Likewise, if you are migrating to Brightpay mid-tax year and still have some employment allowance left to claim, Brightpay must be instructed to do this and also of the amount you still have left to claim. This will ensure that Brightpay doesn't allocate you the full annual limit again going forward. If you've already claimed your full annual limit for the tax year in your previous software, no action is required in Brightpay. And so in this instant, it is important not to enable the employment allowance in Brightpay to ensure that you are not given the full annual limit again. Other things to watch out for when migrating your payroll data include pay rates, additions, deductions, student loan deduction plans, attachment orders and P11D information. Once you're happy that everything is set up correctly, the next step is to finalise the payslips. As payslips are finalised in Brightpay, a full payment submission will automatically be created each pay period, ready for submission to HMRC. Another important thing to note when migrating data mid-tax year and sending your first FPS is your payroll ID. If you are moving to Brightpay and have already been processing under RTI during the tax year, you must transfer over the same RTI payroll ID for each employee. This is a unique reference and is required by HMRC to identify an employee during RTI submissions. If you are importing your payroll IDs from your previous software using our import utility, the payroll IDs should stay the same. If you are manually adding employees to Brightpay or using a CSV file, you will need to double check that these payroll IDs have been added and are correct. In the event that you must use a different RTI payroll ID, for example, if the previous RTI payroll ID is not known, it is essential that you select Force Include Change of Payroll ID indicator on the next FPS. From the Change of Payroll ID drop-down menu to notify HMRC of the change. This is typically not a problem, 
However, as I just mentioned, many people will do a parallel pay run for the first month, processing payroll on BrightPay, but sending the FPS to HMRC on their previous payroll software. Therefore, while you've marked the submission as sent, BrightPay has not actually sent this first FPS submission that corresponds to the first payroll run. However, the payroll ID indicator has been included in this pretend submission. So when you finally do send the first FPS submission to HMRC from BrightPay, the payroll ID indicator will not automatically be added again. Therefore, and this is the important part, you will need to manually select the payroll ID indicator to the first FPS mission you're sending. To do this, you must select Force Include Change of Payroll ID Indicator on the next FPS. Using a different payroll ID and not selecting this option may lead to possible HMRC reconciliation issues. Now that the payroll is set up, I want to point out a couple of features that we mentioned earlier. Within the payroll screen, you can find the journal integration here on the menu bar. If I click on Pay, this is where you can access the new modular direct payments integration. If you are a payroll bureau or accountant processing payroll for clients and using BrightPay Connect, you can start a request for the payroll entry or the payroll approval from within the payroll tab here. And if I close out of here, on the open screen, you will have the option for batch processing the payroll for multiple clients at the same time. If you wish to use BrightPay Connect, the payroll isn't backed up automatically straight away. First, you will need to connect the payroll file to your BrightPay Connect account. To do this, go to the cloud icon on the top right hand of the screen and sign into your BrightPay Connect account. Next, click link to BrightPay Connect and we just need to fill out the following few screens. Here we can decide when we want payslips and other payroll documents to be made available to employees. So we can say on the payday or maybe one day before payday, but this can also be changed again if needed. Confirm the employees who you want to have access to the employee self-service and make sure that an email address is entered. You can also mark a payroll as confidential. So for example, if you are in a payroll bureau situation with multiple clients, you may wish to restrict certain users on Connect from viewing a particular payroll. For example, your own internal payroll. And finally, Link Now. Going forward, the cloud icon will be green to indicate that you are signed in and your employer is linked to BrightPay Connect. While signed in to BrightPay Connect, the employer file will be backed up every 15 minutes and again when you close out of the employer file. If you are not using the BrightPay Connect add-on, just make sure you are creating manual backups known as snapshots in BrightPay. It is always recommended to save a backup of your payroll to a safe location, for example an external drive, server or cloud environment, rather than just to your PC. This ensures that your payroll data is saved elsewhere and can be reinstated in the event that you suffer a PC breakdown or crash. Moving back over to our cloud icon again, I can go to employer dashboard to access my online portal. And here we are in our online employer dashboard with BrightPay Connect. The first thing we come to here is notifications. And the first time you log in to connect, you will have a number of notifications to help you get set up, such as inviting your employees to use the self-service, adding employee signature and uploading historic payroll data if you are using BrightPay. Going forward, you will also get notifications, for example, if an employee requests annual leave or updates their personal information. You'll see these tabs across the top of the screen, and I'm going to give you a very quick tour of what you can do in each tab. First is the Employee tab. Here you can click into each employee's profile to access payslips and personal details. And this is also where you can invite your employees to use their own self-service login. Employees will only be able to see their own payslips and information relating to themselves. Next is Reports. 
and any report that is set up and saved on the payroll software will be available for you to run payroll reports on your online employer dashboard. Brightpay Connect has a company-wide employee calendar to simplify annual leave management. HMRC payments also flow through to Brightpay Connect with the amounts that are due to HMRC and you can click into each individual month to view the full breakdown of the P30. Next is Documents and here you can upload any type of document that you want to distribute to your employees such as an employee contract or a company handbook. The final tab is Settings and here you'll find all of the settings that were on the notifications panel a few minutes ago or depending on your user settings, you may also have access to another layer of settings by clicking on this button at the top left of the screen, such as add various users and their associated permissions. So that's the online employer dashboard. And as we mentioned earlier in the webinar, employees also have access to a self-service portal, which they can log into on a smartphone and tablet app. And the app is available to download for free on any Android or iOS device. The employee will receive a notification on their device when a new payslip is available and they'll also get a notification when a HR document has been shared with them or when an annual leave request has been approved. Within the app, the employee can go into documents to view payroll and HR documents, including a full payslip library. They can go into the calendar to view their past and scheduled leave and request leave or in My Details, they can view and update their personal details to ensure GDPR compliance. So it's a really powerful app with self-service features so that the employees can do a lot of the admin heavy tasks themselves, rather than coming to you, for example, for lost payslips or leave balance inquiries. That's it for the demo of the software. I'm now going to pass you back to Anya. Thanks, Robin. We're coming close to the end of the webinar. You should now have a good idea of the challenges of moving payroll software and what you can do to make it a lot easier. You've also got to see many of the features and benefits of switching to Brightpay and what you need to do to get set up on the software. If you want to learn more about running your payroll on a day-to-day -day basis using Brightpay, you can book onto one of our online demos. The demo will cover in more depth a lot of the features that we mentioned, such as the integration with accounting and pension systems, the batch payroll processing, and how Brightpay works alongside Brightpay Connect. If you attend a demo, you will be assigned a dedicated account manager who can answer any questions that you may have and help you through your decision-making and setup process. We also have a migration team who can help you with queries in relation to the migration process. In the follow-up email you'll receive after this webinar, we'll include a form that you can fill out if you're interested in booking a migration consultation. The migration experts do not do the full migration for you or move across details such as pensions, additions, deductions or pay rates. There is a limited number of migration slots and they book up quickly. If the migration team are fully booked up, of course our support team are there to assist you. Either way, between the content of today's webinars and the help guide that's specific to your current software, you shouldn't really have any problems with the migration process. The follow-up email will also include all of the relevant help guides that we mentioned throughout the webinar, a link to the recording of the webinar so you can refer back to it, and a copy of the webinar slides. We have now come to the end of the webinar I can see that we have a lot of questions that have come in, but because there is such variety between each company in terms of how their payroll is set up, we're not going to go through the questions during the webinar. Instead, if you have asked a question, a member of the Brightpay team will contact you as soon as possible to answer your question directly. A survey will automatically pop up when the webinar ends, so please type in any further questions you may have and we will be in touch. That's it from us. Thank you for joining us for the webinar and we hope you found it useful.